Um, I'm Zach. I'm the head of community at the Pocket Network Foundation, uh, here to facilitate the call and uh, help anybody in the community that has any need. So always feel free to reach out to me. Our agenda today, you've already read through it. We've got uh, the overview. Uh, Mateo is going to give us some product updates. So we should start getting updates every community call of what's going on with the tech, just so people have an understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. Um, we're going to talk about the, or actually we're going to get a demo from Blade about the open source mm -hmm. gateway stack. They've been working really hard on that. And I'm sure many of you have seen some of the metrics coming out of that. So I'm really excited to see what they have in store. Um, Ads and I are going to give you an update on what's going on with the website, the docs, and the community, and some of the onboarding uh, works and initiatives that we've been working on. And then we've got some uh, recaps around DevConnect and the offsite, and uh, Dermot's going to walk us through the ambitions, budget, and roadmap updates. Uh, you may have seen I dropped a couple of links in the chat a little bit higher up. Most of those are to the forum posts, so they're going to go in detail on the stuff that Dermot's going to talk about, but I just want to make sure you all have easy access to it in case you haven't seen them yet. So busy day today. I'm going to jump right into it here. Um, I'm going to start off with our shout outs like always. I just want to do a huge shout out. Over the last month, the community has really rallied. Um, I've seen so much activity in Telegram, Discord, social media, Twitter, everywhere. So I'm just really thankful um, to see kind of like a re-engagement of everybody uh, and some excitement here. Uh, I am I am proud to be part of the community and um, yeah, I'm just, it's nice to have a positive sentiment going into the end of the year. So thank you all for making that happen. Uh, I also want to call out Dermot who led the Wrap Pocketed initiative. So while it was visible, I think we've seen a lot of good movement lately due to specifically getting that Wrap Pocket out there. It's enabled a lot of, um, a lot of the retail stuff that we've needed. So I just want to do a shout out and a thank you to Dermot. Um, some of this positive sentiment is definitely coming from ease of accessibility, which tying into Ethereum was a big one. Uh, and then I just want to say a big thank you to Ben, who's not on the call, but uh, Ben is a great facilitator and a uh, very smart human in general. And I'm just very thankful to have them leading and facilitating our offsite and uh, helping us get so much great quality content out of that. And um, yeah, hopefully supercharge us for the next few months. And this is the part where I open the floor if anybody else has any shout outs that they want to do to anybody uh, in the community, any thank yous. I can also keep going. Oh, Mateo? I got one. Yeah. So I'd actually like to thank uh, Lowell and the Node Fleet team for facilitate, facilitating the successful handover of Morse testnet to our new maintainer. So um, really nice job there coming together and working through that. So thanks, guys. Heck yeah! Love it. Thank you. Amazing. Anybody else have any shout outs? Anybody who's been doing hard work behind the scenes that might not be getting enough credit? All right. I'm going to keep moving forward. All the protocol team. Yes, absolutely. We actually don't see them much on these calls, but um, there's been so much great work behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. Harry, you can go unmuted and you can give them a shout out. In the library, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for entertaining me with the shout outs. Um, some announcements. So two DAO proposals have gone through, uh, overwhelming support, PIP 35 and PIP 34. So uh, if you want to go in and see more about those, you can go to the snapshot or go into the forums and see what they're about. Um, we did have a lot of updates since our last community call. So you see them there, and those are the links that I put in chat, but Dermot just dropped a budget and board compensation update for 2024. Um, there's some big news in there. Uh, the biggest piece is that Nelson is going to be stepping down as a director, uh, and Ben's going to be stepping in as an interim director, and we're setting up a process for um, changing the directors and a, a more permanent um, solutions. That way, everybody can have a, a say in that. Yeah, please feel free to, to weigh in on that forum post and leave any thoughts um, again, this is the DAO in the community. So your say, everybody's say is just as important as ours. So exactly. Excited to have Ben there. We think he's going to do an excellent job and he's already stepped up and done a lot of the work that Nelson has been doing around finances and updates. Um, but yeah, please go in and check that out. Um, so we have a pocket retro PGF discussion. James, are you on the call? I don't know if you made it. Oh, there you are. Blockchain Hi. James. You want to do a little pitch? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, hey guys, I'm James. Um, I've been sort of tangentially involved in the pocket community for a while, um, but sort of have known, you know, Michael and Dermot and some of the friends um, pretty 
pretty in depth and you know have a lot of love for what's being built. And I think sort of uh, I can give some brief context on FireEyes. I guess so. FireEyes is sort of an org um, that's existed since sort of the beginning of Token Land um, and re- really focused on sort of pushing forward um, experimentation in new and interesting ways on top of Ethereum generally. Um, and so sort of as one of the takeaways from DevConnect um, and actually Zuzalu was like the retro PGF meme is a really good one. Um, and I want that to be leveraged by him, high impact project. Um, even by virtue, I, I can actually, I'll link it to, um, let me get the link, but I'll, I'll link the article here as well. But one of the things I said in that article was I think by virtue of me posting this, um, shittier projects are going to adopt this retro PGF meme because it's like good value capture for their narrative, right? Like if uh, tomorrow Tron or Binance Smart Chain launched a, a billion dollar, you know, whatever, a $10 million retro PGF round, um, suddenly they would get to capture all of that narrative that Optimism has sort of built up. And I want it to be a cool project to capture that narrative. And I think, you know, another project is going to do a retro PGF round pretty soon. And I hope that it can be one of... Um, <laughs> the, the five projects that I called out that I love, that FireEyes loves. Um, but obviously anyone doing this kind of experimentation is great. And so I, what I'd be really excited to do is, um, you know, sort of voice this idea on this call and, you know, have some discussion, but then maybe do a follow-up call um, at the start of next week and sort of, you know, really dive down on the details of how we set this up. But effectively what would we, what we would be doing is similar to um, Optimism is, I mean, maybe with slightly less coin, um, but, you know, coming up with a budget of pocket tokens um, or, or maybe, inflation I, I think i'm super interested in the idea as well of sort of sort of like doing inflation based retro pgf but maybe that's even a harder discussion um but doing this um, initial experiment where we carve out a budget of pocket tokens and then anyone can apply from the community right so anyone that's um, contributed to pocket in any different way can sort of outline their impact in the grant proposal um and then we come up with a and the other thing that we need is a structure of how the votes happen right so it could be just one pocket token one vote it could be one node, one vote. It could be one node times by how many pocket tokens you have. It could be, um, you know, like, I think it needs to be somewhat more decentralized um, than a committee. You know, some of the other, oh, some of the other people, asked, some of the other projects have talked about it being a committee that distribute this. Um, I think it needs to be slightly more decentralized than that, right? Like the Optimism have done the badge holder system. If we want to do our own badge holder system, you know, it could be interesting as well. But there's, you know, there's certainly some details there around the amounts and how the tokens are distributed um, that need to be um, ironed out. And, we, you know, we need to take time to do that as long as it runs down. Um, but the, the primary meme is that if we can be a first mover here, especially with like the current price action and, you know, memes that Pocket are experiencing, I think there is a shit ton of value to be captured from sort of like a narrative perspective where it's like one you know we're building this decentralized rpc network you know there's obviously like the ai conversation that's happening now and we're deploying these tokens in you know a unique way that only one project has done before um and that's optimism and we can sort of align ourselves really nicely with that um and so those are all oh, those are some of the the wins i think that i see and i'm definitely keen to set up a meeting um mid or well, start of next week mid next week um sort of you know dive in with anyone that's keen and we can uh, publish it on the forum as well so we get as many voices in that room as possible um but maybe as a first step like open floor discussion as to how we do it why we do it is it a cool idea yeah awesome. could we, would, we, would we still not be using like the the poc dao tokens that the we, we go through the process to get the poc dao token that's I think that's on the Gnosis chain. I think we could easily just port them over to Ethereum or whatever and use them in the voting. We, we already have like a very uh, well-defined and I think like forward-thinking and well-respected governance system of the like the one person, one vote without the whole whale situation. So maybe we could just have those be the committee is the DAO voters and as as we've got this new uh update to getting the the DAO token uh it'll open the yeah. floor for new people to sense. be able to join that how many people are in that group how many people are the like total number of voters around 60. Yeah, I think that's good then. Sex is fine. Because sort of yeah. the meme here is like, I, I don't, you know, like the Rocket Pool guys have been like, oh, you know, we already have a grants committee of nine people. And I'm like, no, but that's just the same nine people, right? I think I agree. 60 is enough that actually like that's sufficiently decentralized that those people all vote on, you know, the, the 100 or a couple of hundred projects that apply. 
and then we distribute okay. the tokens. And again, like it, it's kind of just a grant system. It's not that different, but we can tie it into like retro PGF. Wow. You know, this retro distributions are cool. All tokens should do it. And we can sort of be a, a leader of that narrative. And so that's sort of the key differentiator. But I think that's perfect in terms of using those 60 people. <laughs> Can, can we quickly just explain the difference between what a retro PGF is and like a um like like what we would see on the forums like for like yeah. a, a request for funding sort of thing? So I think part of it is only memes, you know, like and that might not be a great answer, but part of it is only that like we want to align ourselves with this narrative that sort of optimism have done. But the second part of that is that right now the grants process is, I mean, for for most projects is quite sort of rigid, right? It's like, you, you know, in different time periods or for different amounts, and, you know, you don't know how much you should be applying for, you know, and, and there's sort of quite a lot of unknown unknowns versus if we say we carve out whatever, 100 grand worth, 500 grand worth, a million dollars worth of tokens, however much worth of tokens, and we say we are going to give these away to anyone that applies, right? And then we do some sort of like public um, media, like social media pushes and say like, hey, if you've contributed to the pocket um, ecosystem, both in a, or in a, in a community front, or on a technical front, then please fill out this grant application, and then we're going to get the, all of the DAO voters to decide and distribute based on a quadratic or a flat or a median. You know, we can TBD um, based on this distribution mechanism. We're giving away this many tokens, and then you know, to all of these people that apply for the grants, we'll obviously cut that list down depending if there's spam, um, and then we can sort of you know very easily point. Um, fundraising in that way and and a really good part of that is that then if you were sort of on the sidelines being like oh i kind of want to contribute to pocket but i'm not really sure you know i don't want to make my whole grant application i don't really know you know you see this happen and then you're like oh shit i should just start contributing you know and then very quickly maybe there'll be another round in the future right maybe the pocket token goes up a bunch and then we have a bunch more tokens and then we can do a similar round in two years time but you know it sets really good precedent around wanting to contribute to a project in a retroactive way uh, and get to get to be retroactively rewarded that like some of these grants um, systems don't have. Unimaginable. Yeah, James, this is this is awesome. Um, and I hate to to cut it off a little bit, but I'd love to continue the conversation in the forum post or maybe in Discord. We can create a channel for you. Um, but this Absolutely. is really cool. Yeah, and I really appreciate yeah, you jumping on and chatting through it. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I'll, I'll post in the forum as well and, and encourage everyone else to post in the forum. And if we want to do a Discord channel, that's great as well. Um, and maybe I'll post a, a time, maybe a similar time to this um, start of next week and we can do a call with everyone keen to sort of deep dive into it and work out the logistics behind it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't you and I coordinate? We'll make an announcement um, and we can continue this conversation. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, awesome. Thanks, James. Um, Y'all can read the rest of the other updates that we have in there. Um, a, a one thing I do want to call out, pnyxai.com. Um, so that was created by Ramiro and the Pocket Scan team, but um, it's kind of an AI version that scraped the basically Discord, Telegram, and the docs for information around Pocket. So it is a nice first kind of, I have a question, what do I do with it? Um, or where do I get an answer? So I'd love for people to test that. Uh, let me just throw it in here. There you are, pny. Um, Ramiro, do you want to do you want to do a quick pitch here? Looking away from us. As soon as you see now. Sorry, but I I just joined, so I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, all good. I got it for you. Um, I just wanted to plug that you've created a new AI tool for answering questions around Pocket. Uh, it's really robust. He did a demo of it, I think, last week on the Builders Call. If people want to check the YouTube, they can see that. But I just wanted to put it on everybody's radar that it exists. There you go. Perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, as you said, uh, we are not sure if we're going to make another presentation, but we are actively uh, trying to improve that. So, we are working to get that uh, with a chatbot, but a fully chatbot, not only answer a single question, but make uh, enable users to make follow up questions to all the queries and also add uh, live da data from Pocket Scan and also Pocket Money. So, yeah, uh, I, I would like to. We are talking also with Zach to, to to see if we can create some kind of bot to, to automatically answer some simple questions from tickets so yeah we are trying to to make the most out of it and while doing it learn all the needs that we need to know for using llms in the pocket network that's like the the side quest of the next site 
Yeah. Awesome. So if anybody has any feedback, um, let Ramiro know. I don't know if you have a uh, place that you're collecting that, but really excited to see how that develops. And the last two things I just want to call out, new sockets have opened. Um, one for technical support and governance upgrades and Shannon Economic R&D. I actually think we have a third one that um, is just opening as well. But uh, if you do have a socket or see a need in the community or ecosystem, um, please use that socket function. Uh, we've had a lot of great ones in the last couple of months, and we want to keep those going. All right, uh, agenda moving on. We are going to the product updates from Mateo. Uh, Mateo, I'm going to walk through them, but you feel free to jump in. He's recovering from the flu, so it does sound like he smoked a few packs of cigarettes lately. Uh, so the Morse testnet maintainer role, uh, same as his shout out. So Node Fleet have been handing it over, and we've got a, a cohort of people working on the new maintenance of the, the testnet. So that includes Node Pilot, Ian, Miss Kitty, and Breezy. And thank you all for applying. Um, I know there are a bunch of people that had applied, and um, yeah, we're just so thankful that the community continues to show up and uh, help us do this work that we we need the help with. Um, the builder calls are going to transition out of V0 since V0 is no longer uh, no longer the next big thing. So it's going to be a pocket builder all hands starting next week. That event has been created in the Discord events if you want to sign up for it now. Um, and Harry is going to join us next week for, to talk about the SMT. Uh, hopefully we're going to get Harry 10 and not Harry 2.5 for that one, but excited to have you next week chatting with us about all the work that you're doing. Uh, so some major updates from the Shannon progress. Uh, oh, go on. So, yeah, I, I just want to point out there that the, the goal of that call will be to like have actually members of the team um, rotate through, join, talk about uh, the contributions that they're making and that ultimately that'll extend beyond the core dev, right? So we're gonna, mm -hmm. we really do want that to become like uh, an all hands kind of a, uh, kind of a call. Uh, and, and the goal in the beginning will be really just a combination of like, uh, education. So we know that like, you know, we've been, we've been working on Shannon, it's a totally different stack. Uh, and so you know, our effort in the beginning will be to put out materials and start to ramp up everyone on, on what is being built, uh, not only what's available, but how it's being built so that when uh, contributions are needed, that it's an easier transition for for everyone coming over from, from Morse. So, uh, so yeah, so that's going to be the goal there. And, and Harry uh, was kind enough to be like the first guy to uh, jump in and kick off and talk about uh, SMT and that's the uh, sparse Merkle tree. Someone asked in the chat, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, not tacos, unfortunately. Um, and uh, I'll, I, I, won't, uh, I won't talk about it now because it's too technical, but um, Harry will do a great job. Um, I, I, I can go it, as long as everybody can follow. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah on, on the progress update, of, uh, so the team's completed like four iterations uh, right now. Uh, we now have a complete end-to-end -end relay uh, on, the, on the roll-up. Uh, the claim and proof cycle is MVP complete uh, and mint burn is in progress. Uh, in addition to that, there's just like a lot going on, right? So this is a new stack. Um, so our, uh, you know, like our DevOps infrastructure guy like Dima, like he's got to be able to work on all the tooling, be able to get this stuff deployed, stood up, DevNets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the team has also been from the beginning working on like the test uh, test harnesses and framework for being able to put the new roll up through its paces. Um, so all that thing, writing tests and things are, are, are being ported over as well. Uh, so there's just been like lots and lots of activity and we're really like kind of gearing up um, for uh, uh, an attempt to actually get some code running on, on Celestia Soup. Um, we're almost there, so we're getting excited about that. Um, we've always, um, and I just want to say this too, like I, I know we don't have anybody from Rollkit for Celestia on the call, but um, they've been great and, and they've been giving the team like a lot of feedback. So it, it's, um, you know, the, the, the partnerships are going like pretty well. Um, uh, in addition to that, it's, you know, moving to Shannon, uh, in addition to like actually having the roll up ready to go, uh, there's a lot of other moving parts that go beyond just writing code. 
right? So some of that is, uh, and that's in the other um, bullet items here that I, I'm calling out. So we've got these other threads that are also super important that we have to accomplish. So um, one is the sequencer selection. Uh, so, uh, and I think this may even be in the PNF side of the update, but when the team was in, uh, in Turkey at DevConnect, uh, they were able to meet with a lot of teams that are offering like sequencer as a service. Um, we put out an RFP to pretty much all the teams that had something ready to go. This is emerging tech. There are a lot of teams that are ready for us yet, uh, but these were the ones that were closest and uh, we've been getting responses back. Uh, I'm waiting on one more from Espresso Systems I should have tomorrow and by next week we should be able to make a recommendation as to sort of the path we want to take here and we'll make that recommendation to the DAO. Um, in addition, uh, we have an RFP that we're working on for the wrap pocket migration. So uh, we do need to move that uh, from uh, the current L1 over to the rollup. Uh, so we're, in, in, we're gonna reach back out to Raid Guild who built the original code, but we're also gonna, um, we're also gonna engage a couple of other teams uh, just to get their feedback and get proposals on what that would look like to migrate that state and, and make sure we do that. Uh, the safest way possible and uh, uh, and we can get that accomplished as well uh, and and related to that is is audit partners right so there's some new code that we need to get audited and anything that has to do with like migrations or moving tokens or the state of tokens yeah actually moving the tokens themselves you're just um, taking a snapshot of state but things like that um, anything significant uh, you know, obviously we want to get audited and, and so we'll be putting out RFPs to like audit these pieces and things as well. Um, so these are, these are all just as important to me is, is getting the code complete is to actually have all these other threads complete. Cause that's sort of like, you know, we're, we're not just moving, um, something simple. We, we've got a whole ecosystem. So it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty big effort and there's a lot of coordination, um, across like many threads. So. Yeah, so that's all represented here. Thanks, Mateo. And if anybody wants to talk to you about any of this stuff, is the best thing to do DM you or join the call next week? What do you recommend? Yeah, definitely join the call next week uh, as we start to transition this stuff. There'll be a lot more detail. I'm just given like painting a high level picture of like what's going on here today. Um, and then, yeah, sure, feel free to DM me. Uh, happy to answer questions. Thanks, Mateo. That's a great update. Really appreciate it. Um, and if anybody does have any questions, again, next week we have the call up. Feel free to join that and we'll find out more information on what uh, what SMT stands for and MDR and all these other new acronyms. So thanks, Mateo. All right. I'm going to pass it over to Blade now. Blade, I think you're on the call. Correct. Great. Yeah. Passing, passing it to you to do a demo. Awesome. It's great to be here. The audience is really wide. I'm seeing a lot of familiar names. It's pretty awesome. I even saw Steve's name. Steve, where have you been? I'm calling you out right now. It's awesome to see you back. Um, going into kind of like gateway updates. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, for some short context, everyone, right? Um, if you're not familiar with what the gateway is, it's a uh, middleware that sits in between the pocket protocol and then as well the DApps users. And the idea here is that it's going to abstract away the complexity of the protocols. And one of our goals of the gateway stack is to make it extremely easy for anyone to adopt and run a gateway. Um, as you know, PNF is really shooting for at least five new gateway operators out in Q2 of 2024. And you know this has really helped us as well in general of aligning with what would a gateway operator need. We started off with first integrating within our own platform, nudies.org, uh, to tap into the pocket protocol. And that has led to significant results, both in you know, being able to serve traffic. Uh, right now, I believe that diversification is about 85% growth, 15% uh, nodies. It's just really amazing to see, you know, given the fact that you know, at one point, it was just only one single source of demand, right? Um, and then as well, um, there's just so many more benefits from that point of view, from, you know, diversification to cost savings. And then, you know, just think about, you know, even more gateway operators being able to easily enter the network. That's what we want to see. And so that's what the uh, open gateway stack is. It's an open source project where anyone can easily spin up a gateway uh, using Docker Compose. 
Uh, you don't need to know too much about the protocol at all. In fact, um, you know, it actually goes back to the idea that, you know, Pocket harnesses a lot of great infrastructure engineers already that know how to run software as a whole. And it doesn't necessarily need to be anything in regards to Pocket. You know, we run a lot of blockchain nodes already. Um, and so even our node runners can spin up a gateway one day as we, you know, go into Shannon. Uh, the idea that anyone can be a gateway is extremely awesome. And uh, yeah, we just opened up the repository today. Um, and I'll give you guys a quick demo of it. Let me share my screen. I'll just share my entire screen. Hold on, let me close the pocket price charts, you know. Um, and then let me know when y'all can see my screen. No, uh, that's weird. Jeez, I can't stream into this call. Hey, Zach, do you know if we have the right permissions for Blade to uh, uh, screen share? Yeah, sorry, I'm talking muted again. Um, I am checking that right now. Nothing more fun than technical difficulties. Uh, I'll keep on trying and also keep on talking while doing this, but um, I'll send also the GitHub repository link for anyone to look at. Um, Blade, you should have permissions now. Can you? Cool. Try. Put on my screen. <laughs> There cool. you go. Let me know. Thank you. All right. Um, so this is my IDE. Um, what I'm going to do as a start off is I'm going to basically spin up the gateway server. Uh, the gateway server is basically the entry point to the pocket network. Um, you could think of it as pretty much the gateway. And, you know, if you're a node runner, you're pretty familiar with Docker Compose. And so that's pretty much all you have to run. Uh, I'll build it again, just so that way anything that I forgot to compile definitely gets compiled. Okay, now the gateway server is running with a single one command. Uh, I'm gonna enter into the logs, and I see that the gateway server is started. Um, now that the gateway server is started, I can use just a simple HTTP endpoint to tap into the network. Um, and so I'm gonna open up Postman. I have an endpoint right here that's already uh, available. Um, the schema for this is just slash relay, and then you have uh, the chain ID that you want to use. It has to match the one that your app stakes is currently staked into. And so uh, I believe 0005 is uh, either Fuse or Binance Smart Chain. I forgot which one it is. But uh, let's look at the body as well. If I want to get the chain ID, the minute I click send, uh, this is directly going through the protocol. Uh, the first request is a code request because we haven't grabbed the session yet, but the subsequent uh, request will be extremely a lot faster. Um, 121 milliseconds on a MacBook and I'm in Texas and I'm getting pretty fast responses for a chain that can take you know, terabytes. Also keep in mind that I'm on a MacBook and I could tap into basically 50 plus chains extremely easily. And so if I want to tap into, for example, uh, Ethereum, I just changed the code over to 0021, uh, code for Ethereum. I could get the chain ID for that one as well. First one has to grab a new session, but the subsequent request extremely fast. And you could do that for any RPC call. Um, Let's do it for getting the actual block data. Uh, returned 100, wait, what's that? 1.23 megabytes and 281 milliseconds. Most node runners are likely being routed over to US East. I'm in Texas, kind of makes sense that there's a little bit of latency, but subsequent requests, um, it's actually really reliable. Um, throughout our testing, actually while even quality of service checks, uh, we found that 
98% of node runners will still give us a good response. And what that shows to us in general is that pocket node runners are generally available. You don't even need to filter out the nodes to get a response. Um, you'll always likely get a good response, which just shows you know how resilient the node runners are in the network. Um, obviously, right now, you know what what does this lead to in terms of the future? Um, you know, one of the things that uh, future gateway operators are going to want is an easy way to be able to tap to the network. Uh, they'll be able to clone this repository. Oh. My power ran out. I'm sorry. Bruce, will have you played? <clears throat> you me now? You didn't play. That might be the end of the demo. <laughs> oh, can you can you hear me now? My power went out. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Of course. Um, yes, sorry about that. My power went out. I'm on my mobile now. But uh, what I was saying was that in the future, you know, think about the other RPC providers, the centralized providers. If they ever want to use Pocket as a way to hyperscale and tap into, you know, 16,000 nodes or use it as a backup or just tap into chains that they don't support, they don't necessarily have to go through one of the existing two gateways that, you know, are on the network now they could easily just spin up their own gateway. Um, and it doesn't cost that much resources, right? Um, I was able to do that on a MacBook. We actually expect that, you know, gateways from infrastructure point of view is not going to cost a lot of money to run at all. And that's where we want to be for, you know, getting adoption for gateways. Um, it's going to be extremely cheap. It's going to be extremely easy. And then that leads into a world of, people being able to adopt Pocket a lot easier. And that applies not only for uh, large centralized providers, but as well, just imagine if, you know, you're, you're a, a dApp developer, you know, you might not have the skill set to maintain a blockchain node, but you can spin up a gateway stack. It will take extremely small resources and you could tap into still blockchains just through Pocket instead. So, yeah. That's all I really have to say. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. Texas power grid for the win. <laughs> that is true. Does anybody have any questions for Blade? Blade, I'd love to. I also think I saw recently um, some more QoS uh, stats that you have. I don't know if you can drop those in the chat or anything else around that that might be worth sharing. Uh, I don't think we have any up-to-date QoS information, but uh, if I do, I'll let you know. Great. And I'm looking forward to the, the full demo of that so we can share that out on social. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of traction we can get from, from, like you're saying, just how easy this is going to be to do. So. Uh, so Shane asked a question. So this client routes incoming calls to the pocket network. Um, yes, it does directly. And so what's happening is that people are hosting their own little HTTP server and under the hood, the HTTP server is sending it all over to the network. <laughs> Blade, do you want to talk a bit about, um, <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of work that's gone into optimizing um, the HTTP server. Um, You've spoken to me a bit about that, and I've posted about that in an update to the Gatewayverse forum thread. But do you want to talk a bit about that here as well? Uh, just kind oh, of yeah, absolutely. Your Love your to. your thinking behind that, the work that's gone into that, the sort of benefits that we've like like where where we've seen uh, optimizations, etc. Yeah, for sure. So we've optimized, and this is on the readme for the the gateway as well. But the idea is that we've optimized both on the request level and then as well, how do we uh, handle the actual incoming data whenever a user makes a request to us? And this might be going a little bit too technical, but the high level overview is that every single time a gateway uh, receives a request 
the language basically has to decode what request is coming in. And that's through JSON. And so the idea is that you're doing something called serialization and deserialization. And of course that takes compute cycles. And uh, what we've done is that we've optimized on JSON deserialization and serialization. And ultimately what that did was basically give us three or four X uh, improvement on uh, that workload specifically. And like, what does that actually mean in the grand scheme of things is that uh, because it's now more performant, that actually means that gateways actually have better latency, better reliability, and then as well, ultimately, because it's taking less processing power, that means also less, you know, cost for the network. Um, we spent a lot of time optimizing at this level. Generally speaking, I wouldn't advise uh, programmers to do this level of premature optimization. However, we also have to consider that, you know, gateways really need to be equipped to be able to handle millions of requests uh, at a given time. And so this had to be optimized for a use case um, because we weren't willing to just, you know, throw money at compute cycles. Um, it doesn't fit our ethos uh, over at Nodis. And then ultimately we are giving it all back to the community. And so people can take the learnings that we have put into our own custom pocket client they can adopt it themselves, or they could just, you know, figure out what we're doing through source code and apply it to their gateway as well. All right, Blade, thank you so much. Really appreciate the demo. Um, if anybody does have questions for Blade or for Nodis after this, uh, DM's the best way to get a hold of you. Uh, we have a Discord channel. Um, I'll post in the link. Uh, you're more than uh, open to join that and talk about gateways and or do the DM. Happy to do whatever way. But yeah, Great. thank you all. Thanks, Blade. All right. I'm going to pop back to share on my screen. All right. Okay, moving on, uh, we have updates from Ads and me on the website Docs and Community Upgrades. Um, well, we've got some Discord changes, as you, as you may have seen. Uh, we're working through some permission stuff as well. Um, we are attempting to fix some of the problems we're seeing, which is communications very scattered. So context switching and then fatigue from uh, where was that conversation and how do I make sure that I follow up on it? Um, and basically how hard it is to use Telegram as a, as a work tool. So we're trying to migrate all of our conversations into Discord. It allows us to invite more people in when we need support, and it also allows us to track everything we need. Um, and then we, we also added a bunch of new security features to the Discord um, and then lessened those because URLs were not getting through. Uh, and then I'm just encouraging everybody, we know we're going through a feedback process. I want to do a quick shout out to CoUnity who's helped us uh, upgrade the the server and get all of these things in place, um, but we're going to have some issues. So definitely feel free to DM me, or um, there is a channel specifically for the Discord changes. Um, I will put it in the chat here in a second. And there's also a help desk. So I encourage anybody who's having issues to just reach out, and we'll get those solved as soon as we can. And then ads, are you with us still? I see you over here. Do you want to talk about docs and website? <laughs> Yeah, sure. So um, most people have already noticed the docs and the website have changed relatively dramatically. Um, so yeah, the, the, there have been some major changes, not only in the visual identity, but also in the con on the content side of things, particularly on the docs. Um, so just to encourage people to please give us feedback. Um, there were a lot of inconsistencies in the old documentation and there were some elements that, that were frankly out of date and could be misleading. Um, it was gonna be extremely difficult <laughs> to make sure we had all of those covered. So we've ended up rebuilding them. Um, now that means that there are gonna be some things that you will notice are missing. Um, it's not intentional. Um, please do flag them with us. Uh, we do have a list of things that we are still creating or bringing over. Um, please do raise it. Uh, keep the feedback coming. I'm also very aware this will be the first time that people see the kind of new brand identity kind of 
in the digital flesh, if that's a thing. Um, so it'd be great to hear reactions, thoughts, feedback um, as we as we continue to implement that. Um, and then just to say on the docs, the next big shift that we're going to be implementing mm -hmm. is around tutorial content and starting to think about things like open source libraries. I am going to create a forum post. Um, Patrick Skinner has been helping us with a lot of this stuff. So I know he's got some ideas for some stuff that is needed. I'm going to create a forum post and ask you guys to tell us if there's anything that you would like to see explained, what kind of content you've seen. You know, let's let's not be afraid to be inspired by some of our competitors, stuff you think that that we are missing out on that we need to have. Like, yeah, just open the floodgates of feedback, please. Thanks, Ads. Yeah, just echoing what you said. Um, you're going to see stuff that you need, and I promise you that we want to have it there as well. So just shoot a note to us. That way we can make sure it's on our radar and to-do list. And again, um, we have lots of mechanisms for people who want to contribute. So if you are looking to contribute in some way, you can reach out to us. You can go to our forum, look up sockets, pops. Um, we'd love to work with people who are self-starters and able to get us over the finish line for a lot of this work. Ads, I think you're up next for uh, DevConnect as well. I think I am. <laughs> Um, yeah, just to say that it was it was awesome to to get out in the wild uh, with the Web3 community in Istanbul. Um, I think a couple of things that I noticed, so just, I mean, general excitement around Deepin. I've never seen so many different gatherings and groupings all with that kind of theme. Um, and I think it's fair to say that, you know, that has been a narrative that I feel we should be at the center of and that. It almost feels like there is you know, there is a, a desire from some of the newer entrants, shall we say, to to kind of write us out of that narrative. And I think it was a great it was great to see the team there in force and to see us starting to take our rightful place within it. Um, that is a journey that we're not at the finish line on. Um, you know, I'm not trying to claim victory in any way. Um, it's something we're working towards and we'll continue working towards. Uh, we also hosted a, a dinner for for partners and and high kind of important people in our in our broader ecosystem, people that can help us get get the news of what we're doing at Pocket DAO out to wider audiences. Um, that was fantastic, uh, and we had a great build a mixer with Developer DAO, API three, and Fala Network. Um, got some really positive feedback on that. Again, you know there are some learnings we can take into the next one that we do. Um, but it was it was great to see us kind of stepping into into kind of you know the developer community um looking to kind of create and facilitate connection across ecosystems in a way that's incredibly neutral um that kind of is true to what we as a product actually do um and also making sure that we lay claim to that kind of rtc base layer position uh, so our merch was all base layer items you can see it in that picture on the right hand side there um, I'm also wearing it, but you can't see it on me. Um, and, you know, I think that is going to be important. I've noticed mm -hmm. Lava Network are, are trying to now call themselves the RPC base layer. Um, I want to make sure we own that um, because, you know, I think we have a much more legitimate right to it. And I think it's a good positioning and a good way to explain who we are. Um, and, yeah, just generally, you know, lots of good conversations, lots of good relationships. We've been following up on all of that stuff since then. Um, but yeah, it was a really good event. If anybody has any questions about the vibe or, or anything else, let us know. Or if anybody else at PNF wants to add any color to that, please jump in. Looks like we have some community members who are there too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, maybe this is a good opportunity to also do a little shout out for the future. Um, I think ETH Denver will be our next big event as a team. So we plan to be there. If any of the community members are also planning to be at ETH Denver, um, it sounds like it's next year, but like it's really just a couple months away. So um, feel free to let us know if you're going to be there and we can uh, coordinate together to plan some sort of gathering. Um, make sure we get to see everybody. All right. Thanks, Ads. And last but not least, uh, I'm going to call up Dermot to talk about the PNF offsite, the ambitions budget and roadmap. Dermot, you there? Hey, yeah, uh, thanks, Zach. Um, and, and yeah, I, I guess this is kind of really to touch upon the update we shared with the community last week, which 
had a bit of a look back over the course of the last six, seven months in terms of what we've done, and then also look towards the future, revisited our ambition, where we're going, and actually kind of really clarified what we want to achieve as a community by the end of Q2. And I think the, the reason we had such confidence and uh, alignment about kind of where we wanted to go, of course, we've been receiving feedback throughout the kind of year as we were kind of working with the community um, and ultimately advancing on our goals across each of the ambitions. But um, yeah, it was the first time we had before Istanbul, we had two full days and three nights in, in Barcelona. Uh, we met there predominantly because Mateo, our head of product, is based there. And um, yeah, we packed a lot in. I think a, a key takeaway is that we'd like more time uh, with each other next time. So it was pretty work focused, but um, it was the first time we'd all been together as a full group. And yeah, it was just really nice. I mean, be, seeing people in real life when you're working such long hours every day together is just is super helpful. But also it was um, not only fun, it was, it was super productive. And yeah, I kind of had on this slide just kind of actually what we set as our goals before um, coming together, what we really wanted to achieve. And this was kind of just kind of, yeah, looking back, doing some retrospectives, understanding budget, kind of the feedback from community partners, stakeholders, and then mm -hmm. looking ahead to what we want to achieve, uh, looking further ahead, of course, over the next couple of years, and then bringing that back to kind of let's be super targeted. Uh, what are the most impactful things we can do over the six months? And part of that, um, I guess that whole kind of uh, piece was actually to understand what we're not going to do as well, because that's the kind of the the beauty of strategy, understanding those trade-offs mm -hmm. and what you're going to focus on, because um, yes, we got limited capital, but we also have limited time as well. So I think um, the more focus we have, I think the more impact we can achieve with what we're doing. So I think we can jump jump to the next slide, but um, I'm going to quickly, I'm not going to spend too long on each of these, because I think people probably read the post and hopefully you're well aware of this, and I don't want to be just reading out lots of text, but it's kind of just a kind of high level reminder of some of the key things we're working on. And actually, this is obviously now the community's empowered with the era budget to be suggesting stockets that they'd like to open to obviously to deliver impact towards any of these objectives and similarly to be suggesting pops or open RFPs to add value to uh, any of these key objectives um, and I guess just kind of uh, to bear all this in mind as uh, you're going to your work or else you actually spot someone else who's um, potentially talented and can add value to any of these objectives so yeah first ambition we want Pocket to have a billion dollars of annual protocol revenue. This is pretty lofty, no doubt, but um, feels like we're finally on the path. We we have protocol revenue. I think we now have doubled our gateways. And we're realizing gateways are really at the heart of our strategy. And uh, Nodis uh, and their open source gateway stack is going to be a really key player in that. And actually then with the launch of Shannon and having permissionless demand side is really going to hopefully accelerate this whole growth. So um, the key thing here is that we want roughly five um, additional really high potential gateway operators onboarded by the launch of Shannon and uh, having dramatically more relays flowing through the network um, in the next kind of uh, six, seven months. So we can go to the next slide. And this is this is kind of a super important. Um, Pocket's obviously had issues with its brand in the last 18 months. It's clear that things are improving now. Things are getting better. Um, sentiment's improving. But we're still not where we want to be. And that's kind of the, our core target. Um, I guess the, the, the core target market for who we're kind of looking to impress and kind of change sentiment with is um, end user developers. But also, of course, we're thinking in tandem with this potential gateway operators. So we're thinking about top of mind awareness, active consideration for using Pocket Network, and then also kind of do you agree with this pretty pretty lofty statement, but this is where we want to be. We want Pocket Network to be the most trusted infra brand in crypto, and that's kind of where we want to be. And we're not saying that we'll be there in the next six months, but hopefully we're clearly um, on the path to it and a lot uh, closer to it than we, where we are today. So I think we can get to the next slide. And yeah, quickly, um, institutional financial rails, again, liquidity has been historically very poor for Pocket. Wrap Pocket's definitely massively helped. It's also helpful because it's showing the interest in Pocket more generally and driving more volumes, which is going to help us hopefully get um, at least one, if not more, uh, tier one exchange listings in the coming months. And I, I guess maybe quickly on that strategy, I think it's to be really clear, there is a, a two pronged approach to this um, for some of the major exchanges because Pocket itself is a custom token. They don't want to list a custom token now if they know it's going to have to change again in six months. So 
we're talking to major exchanges about, of course, Pocket, but actually that would be Pocket on the Relkit rollup on Celestia, as well as those who are interested in wrap Pocket. So that's kind of the the kind of the two prong approach. Um, I really want to kind of get Pocket to that next level. Go to the next slide. And yeah, I think as part of this, to really unlock the full potential of what we're doing at Pocket, um, we need to have permissionless demand side, but we also need to be uncapped in terms of our scale potential. And that's what we hope all these gateways are going to drive. And Shannon is going to deliver this for us. And that's why it's, it's obviously super important. And ultimately, this is the frame for the end of our era, which is going to happen to launch of Shannon sometime in Q2. So this is pretty clear. We want Shannon to launch as quickly and safely as possible. And uh, we want all of the current integrations to be live on day one as well. Cool. Next, next last slide. And yeah, I guess how we're going to get there, really our strategy is to... Really, we want to grow through the community. Uh, that's actually how Pocket is going to win because we have this kind of amazing culture. We have this really aligned governance model and the amount of contributions Pocket has compared to any other community is, is just incredible. So I think we want to lean into that and uh, we know that's one of our core advantages. And I think in open source, it really is your community, which is the core difference. Um, and so, yeah, I guess in terms of some of these goals, obviously we want to ship our new governance upgrade. I think that's going to really improve a lot of things in terms of representation and uh, reducing friction. Um, and there's actually a Twitter space on later on this evening about um, our citizenship pr pr primitive, if anyone wants to join that. And yeah, I guess the thinking again about how do we have a great community? We need to be giving each other great feedback. We need to be supporting each other and need to be holding each other to account to kind of really have this high performance ecosystem. And um, yeah, we're kind of thinking a lot about onboarding and making that as frictionless as possible. And lastly, people just understanding our values and just living them really in everything we do. Cool. This is, yeah, I think we can get to the next slide um, and probably skip to this pretty quickly. Nobody's going to be able to see what this is, and this is a rubbish slide, so apologies, this is quite rushed. But this is kind of more of a touch point to say, look at the forum post. We've shared our proposed budget for PNF for this year. It's roughly 35% less than last year. We're trying to be really focused on what's going to drive the most value. That's largely marketing and awareness and making sure we're meeting the right um, gateway operators to drive growth to the protocol. And everything else is personnel and kind of just keeping the lights on with compliance and our um, supervisor and stuff like that. But, but yeah, please do ask questions as you come through it. And you'll see that we also kind of gave some information about upcoming changes to the board. I think it's best to discuss that next week when we have a full post that is going to discuss some of those kind of mechanisms. But the real high level is that we are expanding the board, bringing on two observers who can hopefully sharpen up our um, ideas and perspectives and bring a lot of value. And also, there will be some changes on the board. Nelson is stepping down after what, roughly four years stint. And yeah, he's done an amazing service to Pocket and wasn't paid for the absolute vast majority of that. And also, Jack will be entering this transition period. Jack's obviously been part of the Pocket community, I think, since pretty much day one. So he'll be entering this transition phase where he'll be focusing on, I guess, the most impactful areas that he can drive value to. Um, namely being the obvious ones of Gatewayverse, the Shannon upgrade and, and, and governance too. And um, we'll be looking to, as we said, to run a kind of a full talent needs assessment and process to make sure we're kind of getting the right new talent to, to join us and support us as part of this next next journey. And no, um, I mean, uh, Harry, uh, uh, Harry uh, no, Jack's, Jack's not leaving anytime soon. Uh, we'll just be moving it down as a, as, as, as a director. <laughs> cool. And if you want to get to the next slide, Jack, or sorry, Zach. And again, this is a lot of text and a first slide, but this is something you can see on our docs and also in the kind of the ambitions update. This is a high level view of what we're currently doing, uh, what we've done, and ultimately what's coming next. And just thinking about this from a, an ecosystem and a kind of a broader pocket network protocol perspective. So cool. I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. I've said a lot and I want to give at least a minute or two for anyone who wants to ask any questions and uh, have a bit more of an open discussion. Thanks, Dermot. Really appreciate the updates. Um, and like you said, there's a whole bunch of forum posts and other places you can comment on these. But um, if you do have questions, now is the time.
Dermot, you did a very thorough job. Great work. Um, all right, everybody. We are at the end of the hour, surprisingly, right on time. Does anybody have anything else? Um, kind of open floor here if people have questions, want to discuss more about any of the things that we talked about today, concerns. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time this Thursday. Um, we will be back probably for our last one of the year in two weeks. So uh, the second week of December, I'll get that calendar invite up there. Uh, if anybody wants to present anything or talk about any of the projects that they're working on, I'm thinking the last one here might be a little bit more informal and more of a spotlight on the community here, kind of a recap. So please reach out to me if you have ideas. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. Really appreciate everybody stepping up, the hard work you're doing, being part of the community. Awesome. Bye, Thanks, all. all.